42 hours and counting, students are gearing up for the biggest event on campus next to graduation. Find out how you can grab your beer tickets, if you are of age, of course, and what to wear when the expected storm comes our way. Plus, putting the brakes on drug trafficking. The government is taking unprecedented legal steps against the Rochester company they say made money off of making the opioid crisis worse. It's involved in and public outreach is a very important factor in improving the alternative. Transportation spoke out on their decision for transforming the I-81 viaduct into a community grid. Now they want the public's opinion. Find out how you can tell them if you agree with the option or not. Citrus TV News starts right now. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. The biggest event of the spring semester is quickly approaching with Mayfest getting underway at 1 p.m. on Friday. Good evening, I'm Drew Carter. And I'm Claudia Belafato. We have team coverage today with Citrus TV reporter Brendan Tierney on how organizers are preparing for the campus festival and Citrus TV weather anchor Jenna Babiak will tell you what you need to know about the rainstorm that is coming our way. And first we go to Brendan who is outside at Walnut Park. You can see there on the map to tell us what about what about what students need to know ahead of the big day, Brendan? It's here in Walnut Park will open for Mayfest in about 42 hours. That means crews were busy all day making sure those gates are up and in place. Also new to the area, these parking barrels you're able to see behind me right there. Those will be on both sides of the street by this time tomorrow, meaning you have to move your car, avoid it being ticketed or towed. Most of the tents are up at this point, including this one right here, which will be used for distributing alcohol in the 21 plus area of the park. As always, no outside bags, purses, food or beverage will be allowed into Mayfest, but that won't be a problem at all because free food will be available as part of Mayfest. This is, however, the second year that students of legal drinking age will have to purchase beverage bracelets to get beer, wine, slushy, and hard cider. Those went on sale in Shine 304 ABC this morning for $3 and include three tabs that can be exchanged for three different drinks. They'll be available again tomorrow from 11 to 7 and on sale Friday morning from 9 a.m. onward. The key is once you have the bracelet on, it cannot be taken off for the tab to be redeemed. A new this year to Mayfest are non beverage bracelets. Those allow people of the age of 21 or up to get into the 21 plus side of the park to be with their friends, but not consume alcohol. And of course, if you are 21 years of age, the university will be confirming that with your SUID. Reporting live in Walnut Park, Brennan Tierney, Citrus TV News. Wine slushy sounds pretty good to me. Thanks, Brendan. <laughs> Mayfest has a new a number of new features this year. Mayfest will feature a carousel, ball pit and food trucks. If you need to drive around campus on Friday, you need to find an alternative route on as East Adams, Walnut and Marshall Street will be closed. Now a silent disco will return with music from six student artists. If you're going to block party later in the night at the Dome, doors open at 630 and the first act is scheduled to hit the stage a little after seven. If you purchase a ticket and still need to pick it up or Organizers will be there Friday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Let's take a look now at your first weather. Jenna Babiak is outside on Waverly Avenue. Jenna, what does it look like out there right now? Thanks, Drew. Now, today was a bit of a chilly and cloudy day, definitely colder than it was yesterday and on Monday. Currently, it is 49 degrees and cloudy. Wind gusts today are reaching up to 28 miles per hour, but at least it didn't rain today. Now, let me talk about the one thing that's on everyone's minds right now. What is the weather going to look like for Mayfest? Well, I'm not going to be giving you some great news. I'm so sorry. It's going to be rainy. That rain is going to start around mid morning and it's not going to stop until the evening. It's best that you prepare for that rain by dressing accordingly. Now, what should you wear? Well, here are some suggestions. There are still ways to rock your outfit and stay dry. I'm a big fan of these clear rain ponchos because you can see what you're wearing underneath. I'll probably be bringing an umbrella too and definitely matching it to my outfit. But I do have some happier weather related news coming up later in the show in my full weather forecast. Back to you, Drew. All right, Mayfest is right around the corner and so is another music festival, Lollapalooza. That's right, and Citrus TV reporter Katie Lane is live in studio to tell us who from Syracuse will be in Chicago for the festival. Katie? 
Thank you, Drew and Claudia. How many of your friends perform in front of hundreds of thousands of people at one of the largest music festivals in the country? Well, Syracuse University freshman Lucas De Labate was recently asked to play at Lollapalooza this summer. I spoke with Lucas to learn more about the music he plans to perform at the festival. It's gonna be just like a mixture of tunes, probably some of my original music to start when it's a little more mellow. Um, and then toward the end, I'm gonna be you know, cutting into some more like intense, kind of like more in your face uh, style songs. And essentially like the goal for that is just to kind of really get it going. When Lucas first got the call from a talent booker asking him to play, he was shocked. Yeah, so he, he called me. It was funny because he was like very like nonchalant about it. He was like, um, he's like, so are you like good for an hour? I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, do you want to play Lollapalooza? I was like, uh, uh, yes. Before working the turntables at festivals, Lucas performed at an array of dinner tables in Connecticut. I would just scrape together like whatever gigs I can get. So like bar mitzvahs, um, like birthday parties, graduation parties, quinceaneras. Most fun event I've ever done in my entire life was quinceanera, that crowd. Oh. I was always like involved with music. I didn't know that this is what I wanted to do. I didn't know this actually existed yet. Um, it was still kind of unexplored for me. Lucas is looking forward to taking in every moment at his first Lollapalooza. I really want to savor it because, um, yeah, 35 minutes you blink and it's over. So I really want to take a step back and like be in the moment. Katie Lane, Citrus TV News. Thanks, Katie. And new details tonight on who will be speaking at the Dan Daniello Family Speaker Series next week at Syracuse University. Former First Lady of the United States, Laura Bush, will be participating in the event. The event is open to all members of the campus community and will take place next Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. And in the wake of a string of bombings that left hundreds dead in Sri Lanka on Easter Sunday, Syracuse University is holding a vigil Thursday night at 630 at the Catholic Center. The Easter bombing left at least 290 people killed at this point and have injured more than 500 others. As of today, investigators say all seven of the suicide bombers were Sri Lankan citizens and from a local radical Muslim group, but they are suspecting foreign links. And the New York State Department of Transportation is now accepting comments about the community grid replacing I-81. This comes after the NYS DOT released its report favoring this replacement proposal. Public information meetings will be held starting in June before a public hearing on the draft environmental impact statement. Even though engineers have made a decision for what to replace the I-81 viaduct with, they say they still want to hear the public's input. But public involvement and public outreach is a very important factor in improving the alternative. To weigh in on the report, you can mail comments to the DOT project director or email them to i81opportunities at dot.ny.gov. And the latest on a deadly car crash that happened early this morning on the I-90 Thruway. New York State Police have identified the victim as 24-year-old Grace Wilson of Syracuse. She was struck and killed by an oncoming tractor trailer on I-90 just after midnight between exits 34 and 34A. Wilson was outside of the car when she was struck and killed. And prosecutors are accusing some local Boy Scout troop leaders of sexual assault in New York State. At least 10 troop leaders in Onondaga County are being investigated right now. This comes as a law firm in New York City released a list of troop leaders accused across the state. Over 120 leaders are on that list. Punishing the pill pushers, the federal government is bringing criminal charges against a Rochester drug company whose actions they say are worsening the opioid crisis. Citrus TV analyst Tyler Lowell is here to break down the government's new actions against some of the pharmaceutical industry's worst perpetrators. Tyler. Thanks, Claudia. The federal government made an unprecedented move yesterday, charging executives of the Rochester Drug Cooperative, or RDC, with conspiracy to distribute drugs and defraud the U.S. government. This comes after the company failed to report thousands of shady orders of addicted opioid drugs like fentanyl and oxycodone, marking the first time the federal government has ever charged a major drug company and possibly signaling excuse me, a turning of the tide and prosecuting the worst perpetrators of the nation's deadly opioid crisis. 
Rochester Drug Cooperative, or RDC, is one of the nation's largest drug distributors. From 2012 to 2017, it shipped tens of millions of highly addictive oxycodone pills and fentanyl products to pharmacies that it knew were illegally dispensing narcotics. Now, the RDC's former CEO, Lawrence Dowd, and former compliance chief, William Petrozevsky, are among Big Pharma's first executives to be criminally charged. Uh, criminally charged. A spokesman for the co-op admitted to the RDC's crimes yesterday in court, saying, we made mistakes, and RDC understands that these mistakes are directed by former management. They're going to have serious consequences. Drug companies are facing increasingly serious legal consequences from the opioid crisis. CVS and Walgreens, for example, paid over 130, excuse me, $100 million since 2013 for violating the Controlled Substance Act. Drug overdoses are tied to tens of thousands of deaths each year, possibly making yesterday's charges a new precedent in the hundreds of lawsuits against drug companies happening all across the nation. Claudia, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Tyler. Coming up next, it's a record that wasn't meant to be broken. The number of measles cases has hit a new high this year after it was supposed to be eliminated. Find out where the new number stands. Plus, witnesses say a driver deliberately crashed into eight people in California last night. Hear how the victims are doing today and what investigators are currently looking for. We'll be right back. Leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's smoky. It looks as if Smokey is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good stir. Next, another drink. And finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smokey, catch. Oh, my bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. They'll test you, try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver. The one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. They call me Maxi, but I prefer tripod. I was your above average four legged homie and then wham bam minivan. Some people pity me. Now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me. I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five. If you see news happening on campus, in Syracuse, or across the nation, call the Citrus TV newsroom, 315-443-1177 or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. Welcome back. Measles cases are hitting a new record high this year. Almost 20 years after it was reportedly eliminated in the U.S., today New York City health officials reported 61 new cases since last week, making this the worst year for measles since 1994. Now that was the year measles was supposed to be eliminated from the U.S., but clearly that's not the case, especially here in New York. Health officials say the number of cases in New York State account for three quarters of the cases nationwide. Most of those cases are in communities with low vaccination rates. And Border Patrol agents found a three-year-old boy alone in a cornfield near Brownsville, Texas. Officials say they were able to identify the boy because someone wrote his name and a phone number on his shoes. The agents believe the boy was part of a larger group, but was separated when agents approached the group and they ran away. 
And the latest from California, police say a driver intentionally crashed into pedestrians last night. Witnesses say a black sedan plowed into eight people just before seven o'clock last night in Sunnyvale, which is 40 minutes, 40 miles rather southeast of San Francisco. All eight victims are in the hospital, some with serious injuries. Sunnyvale police say the driver is in custody and they're looking at all possible motives. And the New York Times reports today that the Department of Homeland Security was told not to bring up Russian interference in front of President Trump before Kirsten Nielsen was forced to resign as Secretary of Homeland Security. She reportedly tried to warn the White House about continued Russian interference in the 2018 elections and how the Russian government would likely target the 2020 elections. CNN reports that officials close to the situation said it's, quote, like pulling teeth to get the White House to pay attention. Now, temperatures drop today. Are they on their way up again tomorrow? I'll let you know what to expect. Stay with us. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason, because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels, because love has no labels. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Did you hear about the pony with a sore throat? He was a little horse. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why couldn't the pelican? Wait. Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because a pair of cats dribbling all over it. Where did cats go on vacation? New York. <laughs> the Citrus TV Weather Center. This is SU's most accurate weather forecast. And welcome back. Citrus TV weather anchor Jenna Babiak joins us now. Jenna, I know you said rain on Friday, which kind of stinks for us, but am I going to have to pull out those pink rain boots tonight or tomorrow or just on Friday? So not quite yet. Luckily, it's not going to rain tonight. It's not going to rain tomorrow. Just Friday. I know of it course, sucks to hear, but at least we can enjoy the weather for tomorrow. Now let's take a look at tonight. So tonight it's going to be partly cloudy. It's going to be 39 degrees, so it's pretty chilly, even colder than it is right now. So if you're going out tonight, you're going to want to bundle up. It's pretty cold. Let's look at some current temperatures throughout the area right now. Pretty consistent, high 40s, low 50s, but we are seeing some differences in the north and in the south. 58 degrees in Elmira, that's pretty warm compared with 47, 49s, Syracuse, Rome area. Now let's look at tomorrow. Like I said, tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day. So here's when you're going to want to get your sun in. Not on Friday. It's going to be a little chillier in the morning, but then it's going to warm up into the evening. It's going to be really warm, sunny, perfect. Like I said, that UV index, that's going to be eight. That's really high compared to it's two today. So that's going to be a perfect day for going outside. And now let's take a look at your five day forecast. So tomorrow, like I said, it's going to be a beautiful day. Friday, that rain. Saturday is going to be another nice day, and then we're going to finish up the weekend and into next week with some rain and clouds coming in. Now to you, Corey, with sports. Hey, Jenna, thanks so much. Coming up in sports, Syracuse women's lacrosse opened up postseason play today, earlier today in Chestnut Hill against Virginia. Find out if the Orange stayed alive in the ACC tournament. Plus, SU men's lacrosse gears up for its conference tournament matchup with North Carolina. All that and more after the break.
And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. Good evening and welcome to sports. I'm Corey Spector. Flashback one year ago when Syracuse women's lacrosse had a postseason to forget. The Orange got bounced in the first round of the ACC tournament by North Carolina and then fell to Princeton in the first round of the NCAA tournament. But this year is an entirely different story. Gary Gate and company polished off a 14 and three regular season and continued that success today. Syracuse took care of Virginia 12 to 10 to advance to the second round of the conference tournament. The Orange looked like they were primed for an easy afternoon as he wrapped up the first half holding a 9-2 lead. UVA tallied nine second half goals, but the deficit just way too much to overcome. Emily Harris Chuck registered her 12th four goal game of the season. Next up, Syracuse challenges the number one team in the tournament, the number one team in the country, Boston College on Friday. On the men's side, the Orange invaded the all ACC team. Six Syracuse players were named all conference selections a few hours ago, including goalie Drake Porter. In his first year as a full time starter, the junior ranks seventh in the nation in save percentage. He joins others like Nate Solomon. The senior attacker is second on the team in goals and points this season. The talent is imminent on this roster and that star power is going to be needed in the first round of the ACC tournament against North Carolina tomorrow. Here's head coach John Desco with a preview. Well, I think any time that you've, uh, you, you've just beaten somebody a couple weeks ago, you've got to get back into your players' heads and, and say, hey, these guys are playing, you know, this is a huge game for North Carolina. It could be determined whether they're in the playoffs or not. So that uh, uh, it's huge for them. They're going to be playing as hard as they can. And now we've got to match that and not being overconfident uh, when you've just beaten somebody a couple weeks ago. Well, the men's basketball season is a lot of months away, but now there's something to look forward to. The longtime rivalry between Syracuse and Georgetown is back. The former Big East foes have officially agreed to a four year deal, which includes two home games for both squads. The series resumes in Capital One Arena down in our nation's capital on December 14th. The Orange lead the all time series with the Hoyas with a record of 51 and 43. And in local hockey tonight, the or rather last night, the crunch staved off elimination and skated past the Monsters 2 to 1. Carter Verhage played a role on both Syracuse goals and has tallied a point on each of the team's six postseason goals. The crunch come back home tomorrow, looking to even the North Division semifinals at two apiece. And in baseball tonight, the Mets look to polish off a sweep against the Phillies in Queens tonight. First pitch is set for a little after seven and the Yankees are once again out west to take on the Angels. CC Sabathia back on the bump looking for his second win of the campaign. Yanks and Halos get rolling after 10 o'clock. All right, Corey, so that's what's going on with New York sports, yeah. but the game seven in NHL oh, yeah. tonight. We got to talk about that. Canes, Caps, who you got? Well, the Capitals are the home team, so you always have to favor the home team in game sevens. But you have to remember, Carolina has Justin Williams. Mr. Game Seven, this he always scores in game seven. <laughs> Give me the Carolina Hurricanes on the road, knocking right. off the defending champions. Shout out Jonathan Hoppy, nice. <laughs> Definitely. Well, I got to bring up basketball. I know you said a few months away for Syracuse at least, and we won't be here to see some of the fresh faces coming in. But talk about some of the names we're going to be hearing a lot about. Oh, you're still going to hear Elijah Hughes. You're going to hear O'Shea Brissett, of course, John Belagic, Qu Quincy Guerrier. A lot of talented players coming into next year's roster that are going to get acclimated and pretty much seasoned into that rivalry between Syracuse and Georgetown. It's going to be great that this rivalry is renewed. And Joe are too. Oh, the, yeah. the next gymmer coming to Syracuse. Mm -hmm. Last thing here, Corey, NFL draft tomorrow kind of dominating the sports world right now. Mm -hmm. Kyler Murray, number one overall, you think? I think yes. I okay. think it's going to happen. Absolutely. Josh Rosen out the door, Kyler Murray to Arizona. Adios, Chosen Rosen. <laughs> Make it All Kyler. right, and after the break, we say goodbye to our Citrus TV class of 2019. We'll be right back. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got? Or C, show solidarity? Thank you, babe. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Come on, it's not that hard. My big man fingers are having a problem with these little tiny buttons. <laughs> Whoa, watch it there. Your blood pressure's gonna go through the roof. Tell me about it. I'm trying to learn how to get it down. Instead, it keeps going up. High blood pressure can increase the risk for heart attack or stroke. Learn how to keep yours at a healthy range. Ever hear a voice command? Just say, text Barbershop to 97779. That's not what I said. Just give me that. Now my blood pressure's up. Oof. 
They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Boom. And welcome back to Citrus TV News, joined by Tyler and Brendan. I don't want to do this, I really don't. But today marks a sad day for the seniors here at Citrus TV, as this is the last Wednesday News Live show. It's, well, our last show our last ever, show, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Drew and I's, you know, last show anchoring together. It is, yeah. Good to have you back, though. Thank you, say. thank you. It is good to be back. Shout out Noah. Uh, he cannot be here today, but. Yes gave us the opportunity to do this today. So we want to thank all the seniors on our crew, starting with those behind the scenes. Check this out. You can see our control room executive producer, Maddie Orabe, shout out the head Ooh. honcho. She's oh, so fantastic. The best. Next to Maddie, our director, Joey Lino. I think I'm saying that right, Joey Lino. I don't even know. <laughs> then on graphics, we've got Taylor Lang, who is outstanding, making sure everything you see looks oh, perfect yes. and prime. Always perfect. Technical director, Shruti Marathi. What is on that board? I have no well, idea how she does You can't do that. any better. You're that really that is amazing. All of them graduating this year, and they will be sorely, sorely missed. They will. We'll all keep in touch, though. I, I know that so. for a fact. I think so. But I can't speak for these guys, but I know <laughs> that I certainly will. So. I will definitely keep in touch with everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, but a little look down memory lane for you guys. Check out these photos of the seniors from when they first started here at Citrus. I love this. There's Maddie photogging on a live shot. She got the box there going all in for a uh -huh. live shot. Love that. That's a, that's a camera. She's sitting on a camera. I don't know if that's, yeah. if that's great. That cam choice, the camera's did, tall. Anything. Maddie's not short. The camera's tall. <laughs> There you go, Maddie. <laughs> and we got Joey on desk for talking points. Yeah, a nice guy. little action the shot stud, right there. Wow. That hair, the tie, Wind, everything. How was it windy in the studio? Uh. I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> All right, and Taylor writing for a former executive producer, Claire Morin. Shout Always out. wonderful. Citrus TV fam. Shruti with one of our other producers, Kate, at the 2016 Citrus TV banquet. And here is one of our writers, Matt Liberman, for, from one of his first times on air for sports. Shout out Matt Liberman, one of my guys right there. Here's Tyler, one of your first <laughs> explainers on News Live at 6. Yes. Look at that. The goatee still looking fantastic. <laughs> Brendan doing a weather live shot before the Duke game back in 2017. Look at that, Claudia oh, on a live report hair, from outfit. the 2016 presidential election. Feels Gosh. like forever ago. <laughs> and then I don't know who this is. Oh, <laughs> I'm framing that. Yeah, I that's, am framing that. That's someone I've never seen before. And then no Eagle, who is not here tonight. Oh, him hosting no. on our sports training show, freshman year. He doesn't look any different. Not at all. That is crazy. I don't yeah. know if anyone changed that much. You definitely look a little different. You I would hope that so. Show back, though. Drew's I would blues. really hope so. <laughs> I, I think we I think we probably will. As for tonight, though, that's all the time we've got for Citrus TV News. Thanks so much for joining us. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram and check out our website. I'm Claudia Balfato for the last time. And I'm Drew Carter. Good night, Syracuse. See you never. <laughs>